thank you so much for inviting me, Piero and Tom Tammy. Um, so tonight I'm going to talk to you about your work um, that I've been doing, um, looking at feminist art in the Middle East. And my topic is really, what does it mean to be a woman in or from the Middle East? What links women in this region as they're negotiating categories like gender, <laughs> nationality, religion? And I'll start by introducing you to this woman, Anissa Ashkar, a body and performance artist who I met a couple of summers ago um, in Israel. And she uses her face and body as her canvas. Um, every day she writes a new word in Arabic on her face. Um, she was born in Accra, Israel, to a Palestinian family. And the family um, all have Israeli citizenship. And her family um, experience has really caused her to probe her identity through this conversation starter. Um, so I met her and she had you know, a word on her face and you know, we, we would discuss um, what the word meant. So this idea of her, her face and her body as a canvas, um, dealing with different languages um, and dealing with different types of exhibition spaces, so kind of getting out of the canonical museums. Um, so how does work like this challenge us to think differently about stereotypes that we as Westerners often <coughs> associate with women who are defined as Arab, Muslim, Persian, Bedouin, Orthodox Jewish, um, so many different identities in this region. Um, we have a museum here in town. It's an online museum, the International Museum of Women, imau.org, and they just launched a very successful exhibit called Muslima, um, all about what it means to be a Muslim woman. Um, and they have global artists um, uploading art and, and content. So really opening up the dialogue and moving beyond um, stereotypes. And given the conditions of war and patriarchy that are so prominent in this region, I think it's really important to look at the common ground that women often share in their work and women dealing with religious fundamentalism, different religions, different countries, um, division between the sexes, but also pride in their religion. Um, so how do we balance um, all these different views and find um, common ground Shireen Nashat is probably the best known artist, um, uh, feminist artist from the Middle East and um, really has been exploring for decades what it means to live in a region that is war-torn and misogyny is institutionalized. Um, born in Iran, um, she clearly influenced Ashkar, um, although here in her photograph she applies the Farsi calligraphy after the photo, uh, you know, directly onto the photograph so it's not on her skin, as we saw with the other artists. And this is her most famous series. This is called Women of Allah. Um, and she did this, so she um, came to the US in the early 70s and then did not, <coughs> excuse me, return to Iran until um, uh, 19, I'm sorry, after the revolution. And so she was so impacted by the stark changes um, in, in you know religious fundamentalism at that time. And so she started developing <coughs> these photographs back in New York around the subject of female warriors during the Iranian Islamic Revolution. And so again, moving beyond the stereotype, the woman in the burqa who's the victim, she's this empowered woman with a long barrel rifle dividing her face. The Farsi um, calligraphy is actually poetry of contemporary Iranian women, this, in this case, Tahara Safar, Safarzadeh, um, a poet who works, um, who writes about relations between women, martyrdom, and political um, devotion. So she's really engaging the text along with this very strong, powerful image. She works a lot in video and um, since 9-11, her work um, has taken on an added charge with um, issues around Islamophobia in our country. So personally, I really like the way she combines this rich history of Persia and Persian thought and literature and history and beauty with more American ideals, um, social equality, justice, free speech um, that are um, prevalent in this country. So she's getting us to kind of think about similarities in human experience. 
Um, Nashat's work was featured in a 2003 exhibition that actually was conceived of before 9-11, but then became embroiled in the um, political aftermath of Islamophobia. Um, and this generated in England, Walsall in England, here veil, veiling representation in contemporary art, and um, was censored. And particularly this piece, um, New Liberty, was framed as kind of visualizing all of the West's fears about Islam. Um, and clearly the artists, this is a Russian collective, wanted to amuse us and you know, get us to kind of raise questions and, and you know, think about these issues in a more critical way. Um, but it was perceived of as you know, very threatening and, and was censored. Um, so Nishat has influenced a whole generation of younger women, some of whom I'll show you their work um, this evening. Um, here is another Iranian woman, um, Nusha Tabakolian, born in 1981. And this is her Listen series that was exhibited at the Dubai Art Fair last year. And she's a self-taught photographer, um, began her career as a photojournalist at age 16, and started publishing in National Geographic, Le Monde, um, New York Times, Newsweek, and so on. Um, she just had an exhibit at the LA County Museum of Art, and she um, published an award-winning photo essay in 2006 called Women in the Access of, in the Access of Evil, kind of responding. Um, again, to the media's narrow depiction of Iranian women um, in the shadwar and headscar. Um, so here, she has empowered this woman by putting boxing gloves on her. And this is a whole series that was exhibited together. And the <coughs> images of the women, they're all engaged in activities that are forbidden for them in their country. So attending a sports event, forbidden for women um, in Iran. Singing, singing in public. Um, and Shireen Nashat has videos about this as well. Um, so she's confronting and subverting um, the powerlessness um, based on gender-based um, restrictions. This is a more humorous piece. Um, this artist is named Nadia Kabilinki, born in Tunisia in 1978. And this is part of an exhibit also from Dubai around the um, time of the art fair last year called Black is the New White. And this is a light box, and she's playing with the role of advertising and how clothes um, become such a marker of identity. So she's saying, what happens if we create this imaginary line of Gulf Arab male dress, <laughs> and men have to wear the thick, heavy, black, polyester um, type fabrics, and women you know, get the lighter cotton, um, more friendly materials for the heat of the region. Um, so I think you know having humor is really important here. And she creates um, this imaginary brand, Joseph Van Helt. And um, Joseph, or Yusuf, from both the Bible and the Quran, was um, a man of exceptional beauty. And so he becomes this metaphor. He was apparently wrongly accused um, for refusing the advances of women and in prison. So she chose the name Joseph very strategically here um, with the black abaya um, as you know, what confines him. This is an artist named Bushra Almatu Wako. And she was born in 1969 in Sana'a, Yemen, and um, lives and works there today. Um, and she is also um, engaging with the dress of the Muslim women. This is part of a larger series on the hijab. Um, this is called Mother Daughter Doll. And she portrays herself here, which is quite a feat for you know, a religious woman living <coughs> and exhibiting in this country, along with her daughter. And if you follow the series, they're exhibited nine together. So she completely, um, they, the figures completely disappear as they become progressively um, covered with the burqa. Um, so it's very self-explanatory, this kind of effacement of women and girls um, from society. And you can imagine the guts it took um, this woman. You can watch a TEDx talk um, that she gives about how she came to produce this work. 
and um, the risk that she took, she was afraid she would receive threats. Um, you know, where such an artist is exhibiting is obviously very important. There are alternative spaces um, in Yemen. She, she created one, um, Women's Collective. Um, and so she's really, you know, a practicing, you know, very a religious woman who is confronting fundamentalism um, in, in quite interesting ways. And uh, one person at the Dubai Art Fair saw this and said to her husband, this is Arab Spring, what your wife is doing here. Um, along the same um, series, she is, um, kind of taking on male dress here and how there are similarities between male and female dress and the sort of long <coughs> flowing robes um, and loose kind of masculine clothing. So looking at different ways that the hijab functions in society and not being critical all the time and saying it can be beautiful, it can be decorative, um, it's you know an important part of women's modesty um, and, and pride and in some cases power. Um, so she's, she's quite an interesting person to watch. She's um, making work for the UN, um, the British Council, very prolific. Um, Yemen named her the first Yemeni photographer, so she's got quite a, a stature. She was trained in the US, which I think part of um, her experience informs her experience. She went to George Washington University and studied business and then took up photography on her own and got into photojournalism on that campus. Um, so really kind of developed a, a desire to engage in this type of work back home. And she couldn't find women to model for her. I mean, as a Muslim woman, you know, you, it, she realized she had to turn to herself. And she was most afraid of her, her family really um, having issues with this, which her mm -hmm. mother did. Um, this is the work of Andy Arnovitz, an Israeli artist born in the U.S., dual citizen. Um, and this is called 504 Years Later. Um, and here she's coming from an Orthodox Jewish perspective, a, a religious artist. And she is also looking at the work uh, which um, is used in the Karen Burio sect in Beit Shemesh in Israel. And so she's turning to Albrecht Durer's 16th century masterpiece here, this Adam and Eve diptych, as her departure point and saying, hey, maybe they were actually more comfortable with sexuality than we are today. And this is problematic. Um, and you can see she does a lot of um, work with kind of stitching and overlays. Um, the work that she does that, that really um, touches me the most is um, her, her work on the Agunot series. So Agunot in Hebrew means chained woman. And these are women who are unable to get a divorce. Um, so they're orthodox women who are um, in marriages that they wish to leave and they cannot, they need to physically have written permission to get the divorce, it's called the get. And so um, when you're married in Israel, you receive an actual contract called a ketuba, a written contract. So what she did was she went to the National um, Archive and researched these beautiful ketubot and um, photocopied them, cut them up, which also, you know, as a religious woman, that's really interesting that she's cutting up these religious documents, and then hand sew them together. And I'll, I'll show you a detail, it's really gorgeous. Um, so she talks about this piece as um, literally a straight jacket where women are trapped by the paper and the irony that her get, her out, is another piece of paper. So the dual symbolism here of paper, she's left hanging like these hanging threads and she researched and photocopied hundreds of these um, documents. And many of her work, you know, celebrate um, traditions that she finds beautiful within her culture. So it's not all critical, um, but I'm showing you a selection this evening. This is the work of Rania Matar, who is based in Boston and was born in Lebanon and grew up um, during uh, the Civil War um, in Lebanon, moved to the US in 1984. And here she is documenting um, t the lives of teenage girls in the US and the Middle East and kind of looking at how similar, how much we share, you know, that we kind of 
objectify the Middle Eastern Muslim girl. And so she gets permission to go into the bedrooms of these girls. They're, they're asked to pose however they wish. And you might think we're in Newton, Massachusetts here, but we're not. We're in uh, Rabia, Lebanon, and this girl has dyed her hair, and she's got Marilyn Monroe, and she's got um, Crocs that she wears, and you know, this is globalization, right? This girl could be you know, anywhere in the world. Um, so I, I love this series and the, and this, the way this artist um, is working. And, and here is the Brookline girl, Sienna. You can see, you know, just what similar things teenage girls. I have a teenage girl. I mean, they think about, you know, pop culture and romance and, you know, the, the similarity of experiences that needs to be the subject here rather than the conflict. Um, she also does work in some of the Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon. And here, the room does look different. This is a two-room house, um, two-room structure where you know, many family members share this space. And this is Mariam. Um, you can see she wrote her name on the wall there, the way teenage girls might mark a place as a room of her own. She has her prayer mat there and you know, items that are precious to her. So while it looks different from the other two, um, there is this shared experience. Um, and the artist Matar has run photography workshops for these girls in the refugee camp, so getting them to become photographers themselves. And this is my last image. Um, this is from an online journal that's fairly new called Gulfography. This is from last year. Um, and this came out of an exhibition camera. Um, you know, who, who really possesses the gaze here? Um, and so the, the um, Emirati, Emirati women from Dubai and this whole region, they're in a situation where these cities are just burgeoning like crazy. The museums, there are huge museums, there's massive amounts of wealth, and they're having to negotiate. This is the first exhibit these women have ever had, and I think it, it'll be really interesting to watch as the art world shifts and this region becomes more and more um, central. The, the biggest art buyer um, in the world right now is a shakeup from this region who's purchasing art for these museums. Um, so will work like this be on display in the museums of um, Dubai and Qatar? Um, or will it you know, rest in the art fairs on, on the outside? I think that's a discussion that is worth having. Um, so in conclusion, we've seen a wide range of work by female artists who really humanize and complicate um, what it means um, to kind of rely on these binaries of East and West us and them, traditional, modern. Um, and they're really asking us to reconsider media stereotypes, um, particularly of Middle, Middle Eastern women as powerless victims, and kind of look at how um, being an artist is really a way to negotiate common ground. Um, and what I personally like to see, what, where I'd like to go with my work on this region is looking at interfaith dialogue. Um, which I think is really interesting, and how women's art <coughs> provides the public with this critical lens for sharing um, universal themes, just as in the, the girls' bedroom, but on um, religious grounds, I think is an interesting um, question. So thank you so much, and I look forward to your questions.